she's got the look. The radiant look. The natural look. The look you want. A look like this doesn't just happen, but you can create it with Go Lightly. Go Lightly, an entirely new kind of milk from Meadow Gold. To make you look as good as you'll feel. Go Lightly is only 1% fat. But it has 20% more protein than even regular milk. And because it's 99% fat free, Go Lightly is the nicest way ever to get the look you want and that good milk energy. Start the look happening today. What's up, VC? Seeking a thread. How's it going? How's everybody doing today? Uh, it's been an eventful couple days. It's been finally was part of the Rachel live stream, Rachel's Ghost. So that was fun. Getting in the mix there, uh, talking it up. Thank you for everybody who supported the um, Material Objects record. I, you know, was talking about it on that stream, and uh, some of you, uh, uh, nice. Uh, supported the record and bought the record thank you so that was an awesome experience and then um sunday yesterday was on the was a guest along with bebop boom and the waxed on the michael and stunty sort of recap of the den Bosch largest record fair in the world which was fun to do and talk about sort of my history and uh, time going to record fairs and uh yeah just cool to be a part of the panel and talk it up and uh, chat with Michael and Stunty and John and Rob of course so good stuff um, yeah this update is a psych update I haven't really talked about psych since I wrapped up the psych 100 which you can see I'll link to it below or I'll insert it right here all the playlist of all the videos they're long so strap in if you want to get involved in that and haven't seen them so I'm doing a psych update today with some new stuff that I got over the last few months now, three, four months. And we're going to do a contest in just a second. I'm also going to probably this Saturday, I think, do a live stream. I'm not totally sure what time, but I want to do a stream to sort of recap over the last three or four months the biggest grails that I've brought home. Um, that I'm pretty stoked about. I'm really happy to have, and I want to do it as a live stream. So stay tuned for that. But let's get into this update. First, Dave, aka the VC ambassador, formerly local bandography. He's doing a contest, and I got to do it. And it's a quick and easy one, really. Although a little misleading. I mean, I couldn't think of any records off the top of my head, but within a few minutes searching, I found them. And I thought this would be an appropriate one to show. I have actually four records, Dave. I hope that's okay. But R.I.P. Nick Turner of Hawkwind. This is the Hall of the Mountain Grill. That's some gnarly ringware there for you, Dave. Now this is the last record with Lemmy on it, I believe. Just to, just to show. Here's oh wow, they got the inner sleeve. There you go. I forgot this had the inner sleeve. But uh, there he is, Lemmy. He's, he's mentioned in the credits. He's in there somewhere. But you want to see this ringware again. Yeah. Pretty good. I don't have anything terrible. I might. I just haven't seen it. This is not a very good sleeve either. It's got tape up here. But this I know was like a total bargain. Less than $5. Uh, rest in peace, Nick Turner. Founding member of Hawkwind. Hawk Lords. Uh, let's throw a few more just because I came across them. And actually, yeah, the one I'm playing, well, well, I'll talk about it. This next one is sort of an obscure singer-songwriter, kind of country funk record. This is the one that actually I thought of. This is Arthur G. I think it's just self-titled. It's on the Tumbleweed label. Hope you like my new angle. Anyway. Um... Here he is, Arthur G. Some nice ringware there. Good stuff. Good ringware. And now you know ringware is easy to... I mean, most black or dark covers have the wear. 
There's some ring wear there for you. But yeah, this is a pretty pretty nice album. Pretty, pretty, um, not inexpensive, actually, but, I, you know, being that it was this ring worn, I got it for very little. I, this one I found, too, the Koala. There it is, the Koala. Self-titled on, um, this I got at a record fair. I think I got this at a WFMU record fair for nothing. Some pretty gnarly ring wear. And the last one I'm going to show because it does have ring wear. And it's what's playing. And it's part of my psych update. So we'll talk about it. Head. It's head music. There's a version of this sleeve where it says, if you are stoned, do not listen to this album. But it's essentially the work of Nick Racevic. I see it here. And he would go on to make music under his own name and numbers i believe it was a few different projects but it's all this sort of stony minimalist sort of synth music hopefully it's loud enough you can pick it up this is 1970 on the buddha label um one of the rec one of these records that's not very expensive but you don't see a clean one and you know there's that ring wear dave yeah let's get in there i got a new ring light so you're also seeing if I can match up the ring light and the ring wear perfectly, yeah. <laughs> anyway, having fun with that. So, this is cool though. Um, Nick Racevic, he has, a, like I said, another record under that name. And the titles are just Cannabis Sativa, Methadrine, and Lysergic Acid Dithymolide. Dithymolide, a.k.a. LSD. Yes, yes indeed. So that's what we're listening to. Hopefully you're picking it up. I don't have it on too loud. All right. So that's for you, Dave. Ringwear. Uh, hope the contest goes well. I'll start with Brazilian. Yeah, three different Brazilian records. Um, coincidentally, I have these new ones. I've also been catching up on Jason Hackman, 377. Um, you should all subscribe to him if you don't. I mean, he's really procuring incredible Brazilian records in person in Brazil and obviously, um, you know, getting them shipped I suppose but uh, but yeah his update from a couple of months ago now where he um, went down there and procured a bunch of really cool uh, Brazilian records at record fair at a record fair and I think at a flea market it was really um, really cool yeah let's get into a couple of Brazilian three different Brazilian records this is two two new reissues in them no, nothing original although I do have an original Brazilian coming this is Alsu Valença, Mojado do Sul. Do Sul. Um, originally, uh, I think this is the mid '70s. Features a contribution, and there's actually a tie to both of these of Lula, Cor Lula Cortez, who, um, if you know, you know, amazing uh, couple of records. But this is not quite in the same vein as Lula Cortez. A little more, you know, in the MPB kind of thing with you know bossa nova a little you know tropicalia of course licensed by son livre a little originally the label i think it was um original release in 74 al su valenza i don't know how to say it properly in portuguese but vampy soul it's just like i said it just came out i don't believe it's been reissued before so you can find that do céu que desce do céu eu gosto é de morrer de sede é de beber teu beijo a very nice one although this one i like even better Marconi Notaro. Now this one, it gets freaky. This is originally from 73 and is the artwork of Lula Cortez. There is the one and only album. So good. I mean, this one gives you touches of folk, psychedelia, avant-garde. This is really issued on the Fatiado Discos label. And this one has been reissued before, so you can find different versions of it, but it is they found the tape. I mean, they're showing me the tape. They must have used the tape, right? 
but a 2022 reissue. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the, this is the kind of Brazilian psychedelia that really gets out there, like Paiburu, uh, the Lula Cortez record. So look for this one. There's a is it Mr. Bongo maybe reissue this as well. There's a few, so this is not a, a first time reissue. Marconi Notaro. No sub Reino dos Metosarios. There it is. Filo dos cordados, subfilo vertebrado, classe dos mamíferos, ordem dos primados. And this last one is a is a record and a band I've known obviously for some time now, but I just didn't have a copy of this, so I brought the first Os Mutantes home when I was an angry mom one day. This is a um, Scorpio, Scorpio Polydor, you know, not Polydor, but a Scorpio reissue from like 2008. Another incredible sort of freewheeling classic Tropicalia record from Os Mutantes, self-titled. I think this is the fourth or fifth Mutantes record I have, and um, I hope to find a nice Brazilian original at some point. If you don't know Os Mutantes, this is a great place to start. I personally like, I put it in the, um, my Psychedelic 100, the third album, uh, Comida, Com uh, I think it's the comedy one, I'm forgetting the name of it. In any case, don't know how readily available this record is these days, but super freewheeling, whimsical, you know, playful, and far out. I mean, Os Mutantes, you know, a specialist in this genre. All right, so that's part of the psych update, and um, let's get into some other stuff that's not Brazilian. Here's one that's more of a folk rock record, but dives into this area of psychedelia, one that um, people have just been asking way too much for this, and it finally was at a reasonable price. Morning Day, Morning Way by Trader Horn. Now this is Judy Diable, the original one of the original vocalists of Fairport Convention. And see, so she was only on the first record, which is my favorite Fairport Convention. But this is on the Janus label. It's a white label promo. Nice copy. This is one that was a little bit cheaper because of the sleeve, but the record is a clean one. I gotta, yeah, there it is. I gotta adjust this lighting. So, I'm not pro in the lighting department, but I finally upped my lighting game. So, I've got to manage that. Really nice album. I mean, down the middle folk rock. This is from 71. Um, also features, yeah, I've looked up these members. Really, no one that I can think of who would go on to other things mainly. But Jackie McCauley was the other sort of main artist. And all the songs are, are written by Jackie McCauley. But here's the gatefold. Nice. Nice gatefold. Trader Horn Morning Light. I love this kind of stuff. You know, it really tends to sort of need... It needs to have something special a lot of the time. But overall, if the record's solid, I'm happy. First more Fairport Convention, if you don't know it, you should. All right, this next one, a very rare French folk record. Folk, I would call it more folk than folk psych. It is uh, Dominique Jouin, Wave On, first time reissue on the Sommer label, a Gerson subsidiary. And they call it acid folk from, from France. It's not really acid folk, but related to the Long Orme, original release is a tiny pressing on the kiosk Dorfe label. Homemade recording and fragile melancholic vibe. They mentioned Nick Drake, of course. How do you not? Bert Yash, Donovan, John Renborn. I would say it's a strong folk record, and I love a good French folk record, but it doesn't get too acid like, we'll say. 
What do we think of this head record? It's good. This is a new thing now. Fake OB strips. I guess it's a real OB strip, but it's, you know, it looks nice. There's a cool story about the guy who I think would go on to license and reissue this album for this label that he went and had a dinner. He was having a dinner with a bunch of people in France and this guy showed up and it was all of a sudden like, oh yeah, I made this record in 1972. And he's like, holy crap, that record's rare. And they talked about it over dinner. And I think that's what led to the reissue of this album. So, nice insert. I don't know if anyone's seen this or gotten this. But it's good. I mean, originals are, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars something like that. It'd never be worth that to me. But again, I like a strong folk record. And this is one. Not a lot of other things going on. A little bit. There is some viola um, collaborations on here. Um, mainly a little bit of percussion. Strong. Check this one out. Dominic Chouin. Wave on. Uh, sung in English. Right. I didn't mention that. An eight minute psychedelic title track. Yeah, that one was good. Track five of the first side. Wave on. Magic sparkling eye The shifting in the light The clock has tripped off its midnight strokes and sleeps You gaze in silence at the grin of the strange creature That you closed on the chair at the indistinct feature And you smile Another one, this next one, psychedelic and definitely down the, you know, a psychedelic record. There's a band, a trio of bands, Please, T2, Bulldog Breed. They're all kind of related by members, all very short careers, but kind of renowned and people sort of know the, the names. And this next one is, this is hand, hand numbered by the way, 300 copies on this. I got 107 on Dominic Joy. Dominic Jouin. This is Neon Pearl. I'm going to take this out of the... 1967 recordings. Sort of the band that would become Please, I think it is. It says on the hype sticker. It's confusing. Um, Pre-Please, featuring Supreme drummer, swinger, songwriter Peter Dunton, who would also be in Gun and T2. Plus members of Bulldog Breed, Bernie Jinx, and somebody else. Anyway. This is, um, is this Gerson as well? Yeah, this is a Gerson proper. Neon Pearl 67. What I liked about this is the archival quality was good. But also it, it occupied a space that I found to be very, very different than most of the psych you hear this time. A little more sort of mid-tempo, strange, just general strangeness with, you know, flourishes of psych and whatnot. But... The songwriting sounded almost more modern to me. It's eight tracks, so it's you know you get a full album really. Uh, Peter Dunton's the guy, vocals, drums, acoustic, keyboards. You know it's a little more moody and just not like psych rock, straight up. Which nothing wrong with that either. But but recorded in '67, these were supposed to be part of an album that never really happened, and the members went on to other things. There is a story in here um, about you know where that came, how that came about. So that's a thing. In fact, if this side's over, I'm gonna put it a little bit on, perhaps. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit on of Neon Pearl. Next one, a German Kraut record. Very another obscure one, very much need to have a reissue of this because you'll not find this. This is Silo or Silo. And it's going back to 70 recorded and issued privately which is sort of unique for the time I think Gunther Schickert's Gunther Schickert's first record was a private release and this was too and it had this sort of like primitive sort of cover and then it was reissued on the German Blues and Underground label which is very very collectible label not many releases on that uh, with a different cover with like a silk screen cover and then they also did it again like this and so this is the Wawa reissue. Mm -hmm. This one's tough to get. 
and it comes with 7 inch, which I th think these tracks were issued in some form. So what is this? This is really more stone, sort of hippie, sort of freewheeling stuff. It's not really kraut rock. I mean, it's gets associated with that because it's German and it's rock, but this is definitely more like the Amandul proper records, the, the three different Amandul jam records. Um, just got repressed on the Wawa label. Even the reissue was selling for some dough, but it was nice to see this come back in print. Um, yeah, out of Munich. Uh, one of the best kept secrets of the crowd production. Hardcore, including blah blah blah. Um, free sounding, full of improv, and with a lovely amateurish feel all through. Will feel will appeal to lovers of Amandul, Kalakakra, and Musica Dispersa. So, a nice record. I highly recommend it. It's just self-titled. And nice to get that 7-inch, too. Not too expensive, either. Analog cut from real-to-real -real tapes. And um, the bonus EP, of course. 500 additional copies of this. Beautiful. Beautiful. You can get lost in this one. This is a stony record. <laughs> I just gotta keep it right here. I'm sorry, folks. It's a stony record. I'm trying a new angle. Um... You have lots of percussion, temp tambura, um, 12 string guitar, you know, flute, of course electric guitar, so yeah, definitely sort of hippie vibe on, on silo. Alright, a couple more. And these next three are all coincidentally from Minneapolis. Did not plan that. And, I, mean, I think all three are in the Acid Archives which Vinyl Rich showed in his last... I f oh, he was looking up... What was he looking up? I forget. But I'm like, I should be consulting this more. I didn't really feel like I just consulted it enough in the Psychedelic 100, so... I'm gonna do that right now. The first one is a record out of Minneapolis from 73, and it's a real head-scratcher. And I like head-scratchers. Damon... Uh, Ike... and Brother Clark, never mind. Obviously a rare record. I believe it's been reissued just once. I have to check that, but... I mean... I brought the Asset Archives out because I was having a tough time pinning this one down. But it's one dude... Um, ALK, I guess that's the dude. Damon Ike, ALK, and Brother Clark. Or it's a multi it's a band of folks. Um, all selections by Damon Ike. Ike. Damon Ike. E-I-H. It's on the Nero's Neptune label, reissue label. Yeah, Damon playing 12-string lead and electric lint tone guitars, synth, piano, and Brother Clark, bass harmonies, electric guitar, and piano, Chinese chimes. An out there production. Let's see what the Asset Archives has to say about it. I'm gonna use them to describe it. I have it open to the right page, even. And it is a, let's see, they give the start, yeah, in Asset Archives they give you like a star level for the rarity, which I'm not seeing it there. In any case, um, one of those elaborate Midwestern head trips that will send you into an oral space you didn't know even existed, like CA Quintet or side one of Yezda Urfa. Longer suites are particularly impressive, while the shorter ones less so. A unique mix of multi lead acoustic guitars, treated vocals, and extensive use of cymbals creates a piercing yet enjoyable high frequency soundscape. Uh, by the way, we're listening to Neon Pearl. Uh, someone spent a lot of money on this one, and I would deem it largely successful, with parts that were truly spellbinding, even though the message remains obscure. Pretentious and rather euro in its sensibility, yet playful and exotic, enough to appeal to more adventurous psych fans. And then the next writer says, One of a kind album that is truly warped, a unique sensibility, tough to describe, mix of acoustics, pop melodies, folk prog, and just plain weirdness. Yeah, it sound, it's definitely a sort of head-scratcher, and I like, as I said, I like head-scratchers, so... Never mind, by Damon Ike. AIK AI and Brother Clark. For the beginning, beyond time, life exists without knowing, being of itself, and understanding. Um, 
And this one is a reissue. I probably didn't need this, but it's a nice reissue out of um, the labels out of Cincinnati. It's the, this is Faces of Jade out of Minneapolis, as I said. Definitely a band sort of worshipping Revolver, doing it in their own way. This is green vinyl, if you care. Um, this is like psych pop, psych, psychedelic pop rock. And I got it because it was super cheap reissue. Not buying an original of this, but... Um, a nice album, like if you, you folks out there who are looking for a Beatles type vibe but in a different way, check out Faces of Jade. I think the reissue is still available from Shake It Records. Let's see if it's in, I think this is in the Acid Archives. K, before K comes J. Abner J. Let's see. Jade. Here it is. They give it a 2 rarity. Rarity 1 is the lowest. Five is the highest. This is a two. Starts out with a long, dreamy ballad. Includes a cool backwards experiment. Strange phasing. Um, they mentioned the Stone Roses coming up later. Otherwise, though, basically a Beatles-inspired pop album. Not unusual at all, but it's very good. One of the best in the style. Recommended for people who like Grapefruit, Ellie Pop, Sleepy Hollow, etc. They talk about it opening with a really cool psych epic. That recalls the second Fallen Angels album, an album I love, so... Uh, a couple of tracks are too poppy for me, but worthwhile experience all over. Should appeal to fans of Lazy Smoke, in addition to the pointers already suggested. So that's Jade. Faces of Jade. This is the reissue. And here's an original of an artist who has been re putting out stock copies, new old stock of his records, his private presses. They've been reissued by Drag City, but they also... Um, the original copies have been coming out, and you can get them... 30, 40 bucks, sometimes less. I got this for 25 actually. But it's Michael Yonkers, also out of Minneapolis. This is his first album, just in his name, Grimwood. Definitely um, sort of some straight down sort of loner folk songs and then going into Skip Spence territory at times. You can see it's original, it's his Michael Yonkers label. Really. I mean, it's just when you think you have it pegged, he just does weird stuff on this. Like, he just goes into deranged territories at times. Let's see a label. And, um... I don't know if this is in the archives. Let's check. He's got a lot of records in the 70s. What happened with Michael Yonkers is he got into some kind of, like, um, forklift accident and he won all of the settlement money and so he recorded all these and released them all on his own he had a whole bunch of money he had a home recording set up you can see it on the cover of the um, of some of his records the Jim Worley and Michael Yonkers record so he he made he must have made a fair amount of them but um, you know this is maybe one of the best Goodbye Sunball is also amazing I don't know if I've shown that I have that as well here's Yehoah Where's Mr. Yonkers? He might not be in here, because they're not that rare. Oh, here we are. Michael Yonkers. Micro Miniature Love is in here. That's the big... That's the one with the Michael Yonkers band. That's the only one that's here. Which is funny, because they talk about the sub-pop issue, or the distigial issue is in here. And distigial is the label that actually it issued some of his records for the first time. So, the Michael Yonkers band, Micro Miniature Love, came out in 2002 that had never been out before so in any case Grimwood's not in there if you're looking for another Skip Spence type trip check out Grimwood You'll probably locate this you know original copy pretty easily or look there is I'm pretty sure there's a ratio of it from 74 great cover too psych update um, we've been listening to neon pearl 1967 recordings and um yeah contest for dave thank you 
as I said, look out for the announcement for that live stream where I do the uh, Megas, the Grails. I, I like to call them Mega Wants because they're records I really wanted. Many of them are influenced by the VC, actually. So I plan to do that as a live stream. Let's do something different. All right, everybody, hope you're doing well. I'll see you on that or next time or in the comments or all that stuff. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Give me a thumbs up at least or a thumbs down. Thumbs down is good. Anyway, see everybody and hope everyone's well.